Okay, let's get into coding. So, um, if you look at this crate right here, there should be the documentation. And here you can see the supported um, the supported microcontrollers, the MCUs. So I have a STM32 F401. And uh, here in my terminal, I created a new project with cargo actually. So I just did a cargo new, and then I said STM32 tutorial. And uh, then I got this. And this is just the standard uh, the standard structure that you get when you create a cargo project, right? So if I go into source and uh, edit main, I already added two things to this. First of all, this no main and no standard. This just tells Rust, okay, we don't want to use the standard library. And Next, I said, okay, take this crate, this STM32F4 crate, and from that, we're gonna need the STM32F401. So next thing is, we're gonna use another crate, and that's this Cortex-MRT, and from that, we're gonna take entry, because we need an entry point. And then we're gonna say, okay, the entry is here in the main. We're gonna return this exclamation mark. This is the standard setup on a microcontroller. So now I'm going to do this allow unused external crates and then have the external crates and then this panic halt. And this is the panic handler. So these things are all covered in the discovery book, um, except this right here and this right here, or in the uh, Rust embedded book. So um, I'm, I'm not gonna not gonna go through each of these in detail. I just want to show you how to get uh, a Hello World application going, right? So now that everything is here that we need. We're going to add just another function, and that's going to be a real simple delay. And uh, my goal here is to code a really, really simple Hello World where just an LED blinks, right? So here, first of all, um, we need access to the peripherals. So then we say, okay, let mutable peripherals, and that is from the STM32 F401. Then we say peripherals take, and then unwrap. So now we have what you may call a list of all the peripherals. From those, we're going to need RCC for the clock gating. So we're going to pull a reference, that's this ampersand, and then we're going to go peripherals, RCC. And the same thing for GPIOA, and we say ampersand, peripherals, GPIOA. So now we have access to the peripherals. That's real nice, right? So we're going to do the clock gate, RCC, HP1 enable register because the GPIOs or GPIOA, I think all of them are actually connected to the HP1 bus, so we have to enable here. Then we're going to say write. This is a closure. Then we're going to say okay, W, and then we say W, GPIOA, enable, and then we're going to say set bit. So that's actually what we get here. Now we have enabled GPIOA. Next, we're gonna set the pin to output. And that is GPIOA, the mode register, then we're gonna say modify, 
takes another closure. Um, this is actually a read in the as a first parameter, which we don't need. We're just going to need write. Then we're going to say, okay, w mode register number five, because we're going to use pin A5 and set that to an output. And then, last but not least, we're going to do a loop. Rust has a loop for like infinite loops. That's just called loop. I see we don't have to do a while one or something. So now we jump in here, GPIOA, output data register. We're going to modify that. Again, we take this read, which we don't need. So it gets an underscore. We're not going to use it. And then we're going to say W, ODR5. And then we're going to say set bit. Okay. So that's that. Then we're going to delay. Take this land right here and then we're gonna say clear bits and then we're just gonna do another delay and that's it that's the super loop